Hello everyone, my name is Mateus. I am one of the developers of the trading card game, otherwise simply known as TCG. In this video, I'll be taking you through the features of TCG and how to use them. To begin with, you'll see that in addition to the username and password, we also have two drop down menus. The first is a language menu, which allows you to select which language you would like to see the website and the game in. In addition to that, you'll see that we have a blank drop down menu. This drop down menu is used for selecting potential servers the Trading Guard game may be hosted on. To join, let's select a username and password that we've all reg registered with. Once you arrive to the lobby screen, you'll be greeted with a number of areas and buttons of note. In the top right corner of the screen, you will see a drop down menu and three more buttons. The drop down menu once again allows you to switch the language if you've changed your mind since login. The collection button allows you to see which cards you have access to and which you have yet to unlock. All cards that are lit up will be the ones that are available for you to choose when creating your decks. The dashboard allows you to see your gaming statistics, including wins, losses, and total playtime and more. Of course, the logout button allows you to log out from the lobby. Below the three buttons, are some of your basic user information like nickname and ranking. The leaderboard allows you to see your overall player rank when compared to all other players. If it's your first time and you've yet to play a game, you'll need a deck to start playing. A deck can be played or created with the Modify Deck button. We will click that in a moment. In addition to Modify Deck, we have Modify Data. Modify Data allows you to change things like your nickname and password. We also have two buttons below that, one of which is the Watch Replay button. The Watch Replay button will bring you to a menu which will allow you to choose from all played games from which you can watch. For the moment, Watch Replay is not currently functional, so we'll avoid it for now. We of course also have the Create Room button. We'll click it in a moment, but for now let's look elsewhere. Below those two buttons, you'll also see a user list. This contains all the users currently in the lobby with you, including yourself. To the left is the chat box. Here you can send messages to other people in the lobby, either broadcasting it to everyone with all or by specifically choosing a user's username and typing a message, whispering the message to that user. Above that is the battles window. This window will contain all the listed open battles from which you can then click and join. Let's create a deck. On this screen, you are able to create decks to be used in play. In order to add a deck, we must click the Add Deck button. Don't forget to add a deck name. On the left side of the screen is your full pool of cards to use for the creation of decks. In order for a deck to be savable, it must have 30 cards. If you wish to remove a card from the deck that you've just built, click on the card and click the back arrow. If you wish to clear a deck fully to restart your selection, hit the double back arrow button. For this case, We'll pick the first 30 cards. When your deck is ready, hit the save button. And your deck is now usable for play. 
When you're ready, click the Leave button to leave the Deck Builder screen. Let's start up a battle by creating a room. First, click the Create Room button and enter a room name and optionally a password. You'll notice a few new elements in this waiting room. In the top left corner, you'll find several bits of room information, such as room ID, room name, and password. Below that are the spots that will contain the information of the battlers for this coming battle. Below that is the place where all the usernames of all observers will be put. The host can decide on what they would like the total player health to be. Change the number and click modify HP. If you decide that you don't want to be a battler, or if there's space to be a battler and you're an observer, to toggle between the two you can click the spectate slash join button. If you're an observer you can toggle which side you're going to be observing by clicking either spectate A or spectate B. We see someone here that has joined us, and we now have two battlers so we can commence a battle. We will click the ready button so that we can ready up. When our opponent does the same, we can then click the go button to transition to the battle. Note that observers can also ready up, distinguishing themselves as green here, but it is not necessary for them to ready up in order to proceed to a battle. Before getting into the battle, let's take a look at the chat button. You can click this and enter a message in order to say something to your opponent. If your opponent says something back, a white new message will then appear. Click it to get rid of it and you can see what the message was. Let's wait to see what our opponent does. All right, there's several major areas that I'll first go through. The first is your hand. Your hand will contain usually a maximum of seven cards. And in order to end your turn, you must have less than six cards in your hand. Below that is the graveyard. Drag and drop any card from your hand onto this slot in order to get rid of a card. It does not cost action points in order to do so. Which, to clarify, both you and your opponent have three major stats, HP, hand, and AP. HP, or health points, are the number of actual user health points you have. Avatar cards, which are these cards and can be displayed in this section, all have a different size ranging from small to extra large and when a character on your side or an avatar card on your side is destroyed your hp will be reduced accordingly small is one medium is two and so on below that is hand hand is the number of hand cards you have as you can see our opponent has four hand cards because they placed three on the board we have seven AP, or action points, are your resource for doing actions in the game. Most things require action points, but things like discarding do not. So let's begin by placing cards on the field. Let's take this Onibi, Freezing Katana, and a Learning Trap card. Now. In addition to this being an avatar card area, 
you have a tool card area, as you see here and here. Tool cards are divided into two types. Trap cards, which are distinguished by a bear trap icon, and magic cards, which are distinguished by a wand icon. Now, magic cards are, placed, are played on your turn, either on one or more of your avatar cards, or and occasionally a tool card. It's each have a description which will tell you if it's for you or against you. A trap card is done in reaction to a attack. Or alternatively, when you attack a card and the defender plays, say, if this is a trap card, you can then play your own trap card to trap the trap card. It does not keep going after that. Certain trap cards might be able to cancel out trap cards, so that may be a reason why you might do that. In addition to this, which is on the field, magic cards can also be played directly from the hand. Now the key difference between playing a magic card from the hand and playing one from the field is while the initial magic card placement takes an action point, it can be played on any future turn for no additional action points. When a magic card is played directly from the hand, that takes an action point. We'll see the user or opponent to play another card. And here we'll see them play a Freezing Katana Magic card. We'll see which card increases its stats. Oh, the Shining Tiger increased. As you can see, all Avatar cards have a several major stats. They have an attack stat represented by the sword a health stat represented by a cross, and a shield stat or defense stat represented by the one. In addition to that, you have a range stat where range represents how far an avatar card can hit. One meaning the first row, two meaning the second, and so on. In addition to that, it depends on if one is further back. So if this shining tiger was back here, it's one, so it would be this row only, so meaning it couldn't hit anything in the enemy area. Note that the shield or defense stat does not take effect unless a character is in defense mode, represented by this blue sword, or in the case if it is in defense mode, a blue shield. If we see the player is going to potentially attack us, oh, and we get a trap card, I'll play this trap card here. must wait. It seems they're not playing a trap card. Oh, and we played a trap card, but unfortunately our card was killed. When a card is done with, it is sent to the graveyard. As you see, that card was also a small card, meaning our HP was dropped by one. If we take this lullaby card, once again, certain cards can be played on the enemy side. Just hover over and click, and it will play, and eventually the stat will take effect. Certain conditions, such as sleep, which prevents attacking or moving, or a stay effect, which is represented by a pin icon, prevents moving. The game will notify you when it is such. Lastly, I just want to show you if we take this card, and as I mentioned before, if we want to go into defense mode, we can click this. And now the defense ability or stat will take effect. And if, say, this Shining Tiger attacked, it would be reduced by one of their 11. Still not enough to save us in this situation. In addition to that, if the card is not killed outright by the initial attack, 
Lantern Monster will then attack back with half of its attack stat, represented here by 6, so it would be 3. But that's assuming that it survived the attack. Now, I'll let you continue on. Please register your account, and I hope to see you play many games. Have a good one.